guys, it's March 10th, 2023, and I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. I wanted to let you know this live stream is pre-recorded because I have four kids and some things have come up last minute, of course, like always. So I pre-recorded this the day before. You can put any comments you have and we're happy to answer them. I will happen to be on a plane tomorrow while this is going. But um, let me kind of show you the block we're working on today. So this is Socialite's block 19. Here is a nine inch version, six inch version, and three inch version. I would say this is an intermediate block. You're gonna use one background, one fabric for your outer pieces, one fabric for your middle pieces, and then another fabric for here. So three fabrics, one background. And you can see um, this one, this block has darker and medium. This one has light and medium and dark. And then this one has dark, medium, medium. So, or dark, medium, yeah, dark, light, medium. So you can kind of play with it and see um, what you think looks best. Now, going forward, I'm not going to show my sample maker blocks because they're actually sewing them into a quilt for you and getting them to the quilter so at the end we can show you their finished quilts. I did want to talk about the designer of this block. It's Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts, who we all know and love. The block is called Invigorate, and her block is so cute. So what she did with this one is she showed, she sewed with her favorite things to do, a scrappy fig tree mix, including fruit cocktail, fresh fig favorites, and cinnamon and cream. So she's mixed three different collections to make hers. She's, cla she's crazy about her blog because no matter what size I make it or what fabrics I use, it showcases the fabric beautifully. The pieces are not so big that they're boring and not so little that you can't really see what the fabric is. That's why this is one of those blocks that she comes back to over and over. So in this block, this is a half square triangle. This is a rectangle with a corner square. These are corner squares, and this is just a solid. So super easy. Now I'm gonna be making the three inch version. So we're gonna talk a lot about starching and getting your fabric right. But I wanted to show you and this is kind of a tease that we're gonna talk in more detail about next week. So fruit salad just arrived. This book has eight quilts and it has all of the fruit quilts that Joanna has done. And if you look on our What's New page, you're gonna see a free setting to make a table runner. And I'm gonna talk more in detail about that next week because we're finalizing the details. But Joanna is going to be hosting a quilt along on her Facebook group. So you'll wanna join that. And then we're gonna be doing a smaller version that's a table runner. And um, so the fruit cocktail fabric did come in stock. The yardage is not here yet, but the pre-cuts are. And her brand new book is in stock and it is fabulous. I'm gonna kind of flip. So you can kind of see how fabulous it is because it is so cute. Great photography like always. So you're going to love this book. I can't wait to join you because I'm going to be sewing along too. Another thing I wanted to mention this week is I'm so excited. So Creative Grids finally did a one and a half inch square ruler for me and a two and a half by four and a half inch ruler for me. So I begged and begged and begged to get these rulers. And I am so excited because we're going to actually just in time, they came just in time for us to show you how to use it and how useful it's going to be just like the two and a half inch ruler. So we're going to jump into the block. And I would say this is intermediate. Now, I would say if you're working on the three inch, of course, it's going to be advanced. But like I said, the first part is half square triangles. So we're gonna focus on this first part. Now, if you are making the three inch size, you can use our half inch triangle paper. If you're using the one, the three, sorry, the small block uses half inch paper. The medium block uses one inch and the larger block uses one and a half. And I've gotten a lot of questions about how do we make triangles with how do we make half square triangles without triangle paper? So that's what I'm gonna to do today. So we wrote this pattern, fabrics A and fabric D, where it's slightly bigger and then you trim down. So I'm gonna show you how, if I didn't own triangle paper at my house or if I got stranded on an island with my sewing machine and no triangle paper, this is how I would make it. So 
you put your squares right sides together and I like to use this seam I don't even know what it's called seam guide by creative grids okay so basically what it does for you is instead of drawing a half inch instead of drawing a line here and drawing lines on the other side you just place this on here and draw lines on either side so basically you have a center line and then a quarter inch away a line and a quarter inch away a line now what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to sew directly on this line I'm going to sew slightly to the left and slightly to the left and then slightly to the right and I will show that to you so I'm going to really sew kind of in this this area this is the only time I would ever do that and it's so rare that I do it because I always use triangle paper and um, you're gonna sew now this you can sew with a regular stitch length if you want or smaller up to you So now I'm going to cut on that center line. And so my seam is, is you know, like a 3 eighths instead of, or a, I don't know, it's slightly smaller than a quarter inch, but it'll be totally fine. So here I'm going to set my seam and press to one side and then press open. And just remember, this is how I do my half square triangles. You can sew on that line and it'll still work. I just am kind of quirky about how I do my things, if you haven't noticed. And when I press open, I want to press on the top too, just to make sure there's nothing um, unflat. Okay, so when you look, it says this needs to be one inch by one inch. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna get my new handy dandy one and a half, put it here. And what I'm looking at is this diagonal line needs to be exactly on that seam, cut two sides, flip it, and then cut the other side. So when you're looking at it, make sure when you're trimming, there's enough to come back and trim inside here. Oh my gosh, this is going to be like the best ruler ever. And so you're going to do that on all of your half square triangles and you're going to make a total of four of them. And so um, somehow here we cheat and we have four. Da, 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 four half square triangles. Now what we're gonna do is go to step two, which is a rectangle and a corner square. So I'm gonna take my fabric E, which is here, my fabric C, and on the wrong side of the fabric C, I'm gonna draw a line from corner to corner, and I'm gonna use glue today, and I'm gonna show you why. So I have been using the Acorn Precision Glue on anything super small. And I had had several customers like over the last 10 years, or ever since it developed, trying to get me to use it, and I was like, oh, I don't need it. And then I used it, and then I was like, why didn't I listen years ago? So basically, and this really helps if you're doing a ton of like say 50 small pieces if you put them on there then as you go they're not going to move and you want to make sure that square is just right on there and we're going to stitch now this time directly on the line i'm not going to stitch um to any side just right on that line I'm going to trim a quarter inch away. Whew. 
press and sometimes there's a little glue in there there was glue in there so I got it a little too close and that's okay now here what I like to do on anything that has a corner square is just put your ruler on here and just trim that corner just make sure and I know it's just a tiny, see how tiny that is? It's going to make a big difference. I know that sounds crazy, but just turn, just getting that little tiny bit off is going to help. So you're going to make four of these. And fun fact of the day, I really dislike working with lights like this, mediums. So uh, it's really a struggle for me to work with these today because I can't stand it. Um, so the next thing you're going to do is we're going to build the corner unit. You'll take a fabric B, one of your half square triangles, and it's going to go this direction, and then one of these. That's the unit you're going to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together with a quarter inch seam, press, and then add this and make one unit. So here I am going to change the foot on my machine. And I'm keeping my pattern because I want to make sure I keep my triangles or my medium red print the right direction. So I just make sure that's the right direction and add this. Now I am going to pin this. So I'll pin at the, now this is when it's so tiny but it'll be so worth it. So you'll pin there and I just keep that with my finger and just sew with a quarter inch seam. Now, since I'm pressing open, and I would always recommend pressing open on a three inch block with this many seams, I wanna make sure all of this stays flat. Set your seam, press to one side, and then we're gonna press open. And a clapper will really help with this block. Um, if you haven't tried a clapper, they are amazing. I can't say enough good things about them. So then these are going to go away because we sewed those magically off camera and we have four of these outer units. And then we have the center unit which is right here. So I'm going to put that there. Now we just need to make these middle units or side units. So I'm going to take my fabric F, two fabric C's, and on the wrong side of the fabric C, draw a line from corner to corner. And I'm also going to use glue on this one. And it doesn't matter which side you start on. You can start left, right, either, either one. And then sometimes I put a little too much glue, so maybe y'all should just do one dot. I like to do three for some reason. I feel like it keeps it. And as long as it's right on there, it's going to, it's going to stay. Stitch directly on that line. So I have to stitch back to my open toe foot. And one thing I did want to mention is I used the glue on the smaller pieces because two reasons. I can't save this and turn it into something else. Number two, using pins on something small will cut into your seam allowance slightly. 
And I'll show you an example of why in one second. And obviously the, the goal is not to get glue on your um, iron, but I'm not gonna pretend that I've never not done that because I have. So here I'm gonna add to the other side. Well, first I'm gonna show you a pin. You could pin this if you wanted, but when I do corner squares, I like to do three pins. And that's just so hard with a small piece. So I'm gonna use my glue. And of course, use whatever you have. Um, I'm not sure if the glue pins would work or not. I haven't tried that. And I will say this two by four inch ruler is like so perfect for these three inch blocks trimming away. So you guys will have to comment and let me know if you pin, glue, or if you, it depends. Because for me, it depends. It really depends on the size. I guess if I can save the fabric, I'm not gonna glue. Okay, so this should be one and a half by one and a half. So this is why I wanted that one and a half inch ruler so bad. Okay, I'm gonna put this one and a half inch ruler on here. And I'm going to trim. And now my block, I had a little bit extra up there, is exactly one and a half. So you're going to actually be shocked how much you use that one and a half inch ruler. I basically begged and pleaded to have that ruler. I have it upside down. Um, but I want to show you some different options. So you could do that and that creates a star. I don't think that looks good at all, but you could do this. I'm going to turn it this way. So this is the way the block is. So that's one option. Another option is this. And if you did that, I would probably make this light too. So it creates the star. Another option would be turning these and then having this kind of the points go out. This would be another option. So there are so many options with your block. I'm going to go back to the original one and then we're going to sew the block together and I'm going to give you tips on pinning and getting seams to match on a three inch block. So let's see, does that look like it's the right way? Okay, so what I'm going to do here and I think this is a great learning tool is it's so important to pin as we assemble this block. So I'm going to put these right sides together and first I'm going to pin at the bottom and with a three inch block, I mean, face it, let's face it, you have to pin. Now here I'm going to right here. This is a little point and this is why I don't like working with lights because it's so hard to see that point. So I need that diagonal and that diagonal to line up right there and you just kind of have to make it fit it looks a little off let me see actually I'm gonna take that pin out and I'm gonna get it to line up and then move it yeah okay so I'm just gonna pin right here hopefully this will work on camera yeah, that works better. Now it's laid right. Luckily, the center doesn't have to be. Now we did fussy cut the center with the little birds in the center. I am going to pin this even though it's small. And then I'm going to do the second one. Now this one's easier because it's all the way. You can see the full um, the full diagonal, you don't have to meet that quarter inch. So I'm going to start by pinning that. Usually I pin the outside first, but 
I guess today that wasn't working. And you guys can let me know if how many of you are making the three inch block. When we did a poll, it was so few. So super interested to see that. Okay, so I'm gonna sew down this line. I'm going to chain piece, meaning I'm not gonna cut between the units. I will remove my pins as I sew. And if you want, you can do a couple stitches in between. You don't have to. So we're gonna hope that my seams line up. But first I'm gonna set my seam, press to one side, and then we'll see. The block's kind of small, so I figured it'd be easier to see here than at the machine. And so you can see that matches, and that matches, and that's what's important. Now that it matches, I'm gonna keep that chain together, press open. And the smaller the quilt, the easier it is to burn yourself. So I'm going to place this back on my board. And then what I'm going to do, once I get it placed and it's in the right spot, I'm going to then cut these and do the same thing. We're going to pin. So just start with that full seam, pin in place. And pins are your friend or your enemy. So if your pin is too thick, it is your enemy. If your pins are the perfect size, they'll work great, but pins can sometimes get in your way if you're using some that are too fat because it will just move your fabric around. And then here, that same thing, you kind of have to really look. And these are easy to kind of mess up, so just make sure you have a good seam ripper in case you do. And then I'll sew down here. Okay, hopefully these line up. We'll see, cross our fingers, right? That one does. And that one does. Yay, so my points match. Press open. So what guy, I guess you guys comment and let me know where you're going to spring break. I am going somewhere Friday morning. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave this one chained right here, but I'm gonna pin these two. But before I do that, I am gonna cut this thread right here. So those are apart, these are together. I'm gonna put them together. Now see that little flip of a seam, make that flat. And then I'm gonna line up that first, these two center seams. It's all about lining up. It's all about pinning. And it can kind of drive you crazy because it takes forever, but doing it this way, I don't have to seam rip as often. Now, I'm not going to say I never have to seam rip because I do. And then once I get that, then I'm going to line these up. And 
then this one. You kind of have to move it to fit. And it kind of comes with practice. And that is like, I'm going to try to move this gray over that blue just a tiny bit so that it's even. And we're going to sew down there. A feeling that one of these seams is off but we'll see yep it's off a little bit let's see because I pulled the pin out too early so see right there I pulled the pin out too early so I am going what I'm going to do is go ahead and add this one and then come back and fix this but actually I am going to go to the cutting table real quick Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut this off and come back to that because I see something wrong with that. Now what I'm gonna do is this really needs to match up right there. So I'm gonna seam rip from here back. And it is really hard to seam rip with my little, st my stitches because I stitch with like a 1.5 stitch length. So if you just kind of pull the little stitches out every couple stitches go back pull right here and then sometimes it'll just pull the stitches will come out and they did doesn't want to come out so do you guys name your seam ripper I know some of you name your your sewing machines some of y'all name your ripper the Jack Jack the Ripper okay get any threads off that you can okay I'm gonna repin this I'm actually gonna pin at the quarter inch seam on this side and write the seam because I can see where the quarter inch seam is because I stitched on it. And I'm gonna pin right in that point. If you make your uh, needle kind of stand straight up, it's gonna keep it in place. Pin here. And then I'm gonna sew from the inside to the outside this time. And just start stitching over your previous stitches. Okay, it lined up. And then I'm going to show you something I see on the other side that doesn't look quite right. So you have this here and you have this here. You can probably see it better here. Right here, that is too big. And I'm going to kind of just angle, I'm going to keep this there, I'm going to angle this right here and I'm just going to cut that little piece off and hope that it goes together good. So here, I'm going to start in the center again. And 
And then, you know what you guys can tell me is what's your favorite new fabric? Um, we did load some uh, Coming Soon Moda this week. So you can check that out and see um, which one you like. I really like Peachy Keen, and so I'm trying to figure out some kind of sew along to do with that. And then this one, just make sure it lines up. So lots and lots and lots of pins. I do think it would be fun to keep track of how many times you put a pin in a total quilt. I bet mine is like 2,000. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna trim my block up. And I have my new handy dandy ruler. I can use that or, yeah, I think I'm gonna use that. You could also use this, but I think I'll get better results using this. So what I want to do is line up this line with the edge of my block here and just make sure it's similar down there. And then you just cut this little piece off. What you want to make sure is you're not cutting farther than a quarter inch. So I've still got my quarter inch there, there, and there. It's hard to see, but it is there It's because it's white. Do the same thing line up at the top and I've still got a quarter inch there there and there and so you can see some sides I'm cutting off more than others And then once I do that, it is slow. It's a slightly bigger than that three and a half. So I'm going to have to fix that because it's a little bit. I'm going to just trim a little bit. I mean, it's like slight. Just trim a tiny bit off so it's closer to three and a half. So like at the top, it's exactly three and a half. Oh, right here, hold on, let me get this. It's three and a half, three and a half. Okay, right here, it's a little off. Kind of had to fidget with it to get it to be three and a half and it's like it's a tiny bit over three and a half and that's okay I don't want to start cutting into my seams and what I will do now is I will iron I'm gonna actually show you what I'm gonna do I always do this when I finish a block I trim it up then I get it nice and hot and I'm gonna put two clappers on it and I'm gonna leave that for 30 minutes. And if you do that, if you do that, if you leave that clapper on there for a long time, it's gonna be nice, nice, nice and flat. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. We have lots of trunk shows coming up in the future weeks that you're gonna to get to see lots of beautiful quilts. I know you're gonna love it. I hope all of you have a wonderful, safe weekend and I'll see you next Friday.